Welcome to another Path of Recognition chess video. I'm Fide Master Ingvar Johannesson, I come from Iceland. And uh, today you are going to learn about this pattern that I will call the Shackland Draw. And the reason for that is uh, this pattern was featured heavily in a recent game in a high level tournament where Samuel Shankland with the black pieces resigned in this position, which shocked uh, the chess world because the position is a dead draw. So today uh, you will learn uh, why it's a draw and how you can hold the draw quite easily. Similar positions and will end with a, a nice study that uh, comes into this, this pattern. Uh, so a nice bonus at the end. So let's move on to um, sort of the uh, the skeleton of, of this pattern before uh, looking at how this game finished. So here we have sort of the basic skeleton of this pattern and it has to do with uh, bishop and uh, the pawns on the 6th rank and the 7th rank for black. Now we already did a pattern recognition video on the wrong colored uh, rook pawn and the cases where the bishop is useless because it's uh, not covering the queening square. Here however uh, we have the correct bishop and it is covering the queening square so in all cases it is winning except this one. So this is a very important fortress idea that you need to know about. So the reason this is a draw is that the only way for white to win is to get to this pawn and capture it. However, black has a very simple drawing idea. If he reaches the f7 square, he can next go to the g8 square. It turns out you can't kick the king away. So let's try. We move the bishop in. The king moves to the corner. King moves closer. King f8, let's say we move the bishop back, but we simply can't uh, kick the king away. And if we try to approach, there's even a stalemate here. King e7 is stalemate. Bishop is covering this, and the king covers this, so the king can't move. And we can try king f6, and if the king goes to the corner, that's the only way for black to really screw this up, is to go to the corner in this position. Then we have a checkmate king to f7 but of course when we get this position we simply play king to f8 and white is none the closer he's not going to reach the pawn and we can't we simply can't kick the black king away from these squares and yeah it's a draw let's let's try uh here we want king to g8 uh, another way to screw this up is king to e8 and then bishop c5 covers f8 and the king reaches the 8 7 pawn and this would be a way to win for instance king to d8 the king walks to the pawn and even though we have this opposition which would be a draw in my king and pawn end game here we can simply move the bishop and we can move the king out of the opposition and queen the pawn so very uh easy draw you just uh, move the king back and forth and no progress to be made Here is a yeah sort of uh, addendum to this pattern. Uh, you can actually add pawns on the diagonals here. Uh, we, you see we added pawns for black here, and we added pawns for white. So we have a pawn chain, but it doesn't change anything. Uh, the only thing that matters is the uh, pawn on h7 and the pawn on h6. And it turns out that this doesn't change anything. Uh, the same defensive idea for black. It just keeps the king close to the corner. We can't drive it to the corner and mate it. King g8, bishop b4. Now we can go to the corner because there's no king f7 mate. King f7 will be stalemate, so quite an easy draw here. So if the bishop would move here, then of course we don't go to the corner and can mate it. We go here and then back and forth and back again, etc. So very cool that you can add these pawns and it doesn't matter. It's, it's still the same uh, positional draw.
so now we move on to uh, the B file and this is what could have and should have happened in the Shanklan game not that there was an extra pawn in that game on B4 that, but it, it makes no difference also with the possessions we had on the H file you could have added the pawns on the H file double the triple pawns it makes no difference because it doesn't stay doesn't change the uh, stalemating idea and, and pattern so the reason that this is uh, more or less the same as the H file we will see so in, in the game uh, which we'll look at later uh, Shanklan thought he couldn't reach the A8 square which is the easiest drop because you can't kick it away from there but it turns out it's enough to reach C8 here so if white to move king to C8 there's no real way to make progress here let's say we move the king forward king to E6 king to D8 uh, move the bishop in and again just like with uh, the H pawn if you move the king closer here uh, you're actually stalemating the king and the draw the other option would, would be to go king d6 instead of king e7 then the king goes to the corner let's say we kick it to a8 but that's no progress king a8 and now we have to uh, let the king go out and because whenever we uh, drive it to a8 and then let it go out it turns out that it's almost like the H, uh, the A file doesn't exist, and if that's the case, and basically we have the same thing that would happen on the H file, if we don't have the A file, this is exactly the same as with the pawn on the H file, only mirrored. So there's no way to to make any progress here. It's the, exactly the same pattern. King can't be kicked away. The king moves. We go here. This is stalemate. So there are actually there are just no tries to. Uh, kick the king out so a very easy draw so now we have moved the position one rank to the right we now have a c file but then it's a very easy win because you don't have the restriction of the other side being blockaded. When you were on the B file, uh, the A file didn't matter. But here the B file actually matters. For example, uh, let's move the king in closer, king e6, king e8, waiting move maybe with a bishop, king f7. And we simply move the king in. And now if uh, this was the A file, and this wouldn't be available and this move king d8 would uh, stalemate but with the uh, uh, extra file the king has to move and you lose the pawn you could also uh, go back you could also play bishop d7 you can also come around the other way which is a huge difference you couldn't use the a file when the pawn was a b file but here you can come around the other way but either way you choose you're going to win the c pawn uh, there are no stalemate tricks so this is very easily winning. So this is how we built up knowledge. We recognize where to go, what to do without calculating. So if you uh, reach a position like this, what is your first thought with white? It's white to move. Do you push your pawn? No, of course not, because you know this is the only way not to win. So let's just see how you win, actually. Uh, you don't push the pawn. Uh, what you do is you eventually win the 8-7 pawn. You can use the 8-6 square, which would otherwise be occupied by your pawn. Bishop c3, waiting more with the bishop, uh, occupying this square till the king has to move. And you see the difference. Now we can take on 8-7. So very important to uh, to recognize the pattern, which will uh, avoid you uh, playing h6 in such positions, for instance, and going for certain positions. And just to illustrate what I talked about earlier with uh, the extra pawns like uh, in the Shankland game it doesn't matter 
the extra pawn doesn't change anything uh, let's say we move well let's just move the pawn although maybe we'd like to stay on tempo you see that there's no there are no circumstances where an extra pawn move will help you here um bishop here king here king to the corner this is stalemate extra pawn move doesn't help king here so you can act as many pawns as you want on the h file it simply doesn't matter but let's now actually move on to uh, the Shanklin game and see what should have happened there so here we have the uh, position just before Shanklin resigned it was um, Giri to move and he very reluctantly played b6 because otherwise black will force it anyway he will play king here and the pawn is attacked so he has to play b6 but just like when we had the pawn back on h5 that's the only way to win the position to have the pawn on b5 but unfortunately we can't hold on to it so he had to try b6 and he tried it very confidently but so confidently that Shanklin, who previously had thought his position was difficult, resigned the game. But we already know that we don't even need this guy, and the extra pawn doesn't matter. So the draw is quite easy. We just play here. We can even play knight g5. It doesn't matter. Let's take it. King d6. The king reaches d7. Just like you have to reach f7 when it's an h-pawn. And king to c8. And we already went over this. There's no way to make progress if you go to uh, uh, near the king. Like this is still made. And also with the king. The extra pawn doesn't have any useful moves. It doesn't matter. So there's actually no way to uh, make progress. And this is a draw. Um, but I, I would like to uh, mention that although this is... I'm calling this a Shankland draw. I think it's... Um, exemplary how Shankland dealt with the uh, adversity and what he described as perhaps the worst moment of his career he came back and he beat Nepomiashi and Kramnik in the last two rounds two of the highest rated players he has ever beaten so great way to bounce back and it's no knock on Shankland to call this the Shankland draw I mean this will be memorable for him but just like he will learn from his mistakes you can learn from your own mistakes and also learn from other people's mistakes and yeah this is the Shanklin draw we will end it with a very nice study where you will see this uh, pattern being very important and a surprising solution so here we are a very nice study if you want to solve it I encourage you to do that I mean put it up on a chessboard think about it and come back when you think you've solved it and it's full of surprises I can promise you that it's a very fun puzzle to show to your friends because they think they've solved it but there's always like a hidden defense or a, or a nice resource that they didn't notice and yeah, let's just get on to it you can already see that we have this this shape of our pattern and uh, the bishop but there are some extra pieces and it's clear that white wants to try to queen either of his pawns and let's first look at a move like uh, b takes a7 the problem here is that we play rook a4 we have to protect the pawn king c4 attacking the bishop and now we take on d5 and black actually might have slight winning chances here if, if white goes wrong but he has no chances of losing and if he doesn't want to lose he can even just take on a7 and we already know that this is a draw there's no way to make progress the king reaches the important square nothing to worry about actually f7 is the only square you have to reach okay so if he takes a7 doesn't work for the same reason a d6 doesn't work we can take you play d7 but i play rook d4 you queen i take it and i run with the king back 
um, you could try some situation where you try to block the pawn and uh, and make a make a soup swing. But I will simply run run with the pawn, and eventually you're forced to take the pawn, and the king will easily reach the key square f7 and draw. So b takes a7 and uh, d6 don't work. Then a takes b6 is a threat by black. So the only way to try to win is to play b7. Okay, this threatens the queen. So there's only one move for black. He gives a check, and the king goes. Uh, the rook goes back to the back rank, covering this. Now there are two tries, uh, either d6 or to try to queen the pawn immediately. This is what most people go for, bishop d6, king c4, but you already know that nothing to worry about here for black. The king is easily in time, possession will draw. Okay, so only one move remains, let's try d6. But now comes the, uh, yeah, the surprising defense, king to c4. It looks like white is doing well he's getting a queen and keeping the extra pawn on b7 we have to give up the rook but here comes the surprise Ta -ta! king a6 and you can't make a queen or a rook because stalemate and if you allow me to take the pawn then uh, it's already a draw we will reach this square in time because we hit the bishop on the way we will see other examples of that so our only options are to make a knight or to make a bishop. Making a knight looks very tempting, so let's try that. B8 knight, king b7. And here it looks tempting to play knight b7. Another try is knight a6. Let's try knight a6. And the idea here is to uh, uh, deflect the king from uh, reaching the 8th pawn in time, but here we are attacking the bishop and we don't have time to give up the bishop because uh, the king is in time here you can even push the pawn and the white king is not getting out so white is not uh, queening and it's actually just uh, a stalemate here so we can't run with the king and if we play the bishop let's try here you see once again that uh, the king is in time let's play here king here and there was no way to uh, move the bishop so that it covered the diagonal. So the king reaches the corner in time, yet again. Okay, so knight a6 doesn't seem to work, but what about knight d7? It looked tempting. But now we can play this, attacking two pieces. And if we save uh, the bishop, the king is in time, so let's try to save the knight. But here you get sort of a bonus uh, fortress uh, to learn. King attacks the pawn, the pawn must move to h7. And here actually, uh, black will give up the pawn, so let's do that quickly. Then the king comes over, only to realize that it can't protect the pawn. The knight can't move because it has to protect the pawn. And you can't bring the king to protect the pawn, which is the only way to free the knight, because once you do, it is stalemate once again. So a bonus fortress for you. This is also a draw. If the knight is on f6, another positional draw for you to learn. So we're going to go back, we're going to go back. So there's only one thing that remains. And it looks ridiculous, it looks silly, but can we make a bishop? Does that change anything? Because, well, okay, let's say we have two bishops here. They're covering the same diagonal. But it turns out that the extra bishop is of vital importance the king tries to go to the corner just like we would defend against only one bishop it's in the right place we're doing everything right but now we have another bishop and from here all we can do is run out of pawn moves bishop a1 i like to put the bishops like way back if i can <laughs> and now we force the king to h8 so we see now the extra bishop covers f8 which we couldn't have done with uh only one bishop because we need it on the other diagonal and because we have two we can now do this force it to the corner and play king f7 checkmate so a very nice puzzle that uh yeah features our pattern heavily and also has a very nice and surprising solution so yeah this was pattern recognition number 13 uh, the shank clan draw a very nice bishop uh 
yeah, a bishop down, fortress. Uh, and one that can save you uh, half a point here and there, definitely. I hope you enjoyed the video, and please, you know, leave the likes um, and uh, share the video, thumbs up, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.